Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Two freeway shootings less than six hours apart, and now state police are saying this potentially deadly trend is an almost daily occurrence, and it has them at a loss for words. Rod. Kim, the, the work crews are out, trees are down, power's out everywhere, and it's raining. Oh, joy of joys, but we'll have the update on how things are going with the cleanup. So right, Rod, and let's start with the storms moving through Metro Detroit right now. All eyes on Storm Tracker 4 as we come to the 5 o'clock hour. And the last thing a whole lot of people in the dark want right now is another storm. So yeah. let's get right over to Ben with the latest. Ben. Kevin Devin, we were watching these thunderstorms almost, almost completely gone. And just as they were exiting the east side, blew up to a severe limits. And that's why we've got this warning in effect here for the east side of Detroit up through the gross points and that south end of Macomb County. Hail size estimate has come down a little little bit, but originally it was up to one inch. Uh, storm tracker for estimating the hail size there uh, still could be some pea size hail in this storm, but there's definitely quite a bit of rainfall uh, just within that small area. The other area we're watching is down here in Monroe County. There's no warning on that cell, but it is right there at the uh, Lake Erie shoreline moving to the east. And of course, as we told you during the break, uh, no longer a tornado warning for southern parts of Ontario. That's now a severe thunderstorm warning as those storms have weakened there just over the border. However, uh, we did. Uh, we've been pulled out of the severe risk. It was here on the east side. It looks like the Storm Prediction Center has pulled that out. Things are going to improve much over the next three days, but we'll tell you how much longer tonight. We'll have to watch those storms in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben. Now to the cleanup from yesterday's storms, and there's a whole lot left to be done. Boy, DTE says 111,000 customers still without power after those strong storms blew through. Most of those outages centered around West Bloomfield and Farmington Hills. Weather Service says it was strong straight line winds that caused the lion's share of the damage that we've seen. Rob Maloney's been out uh, looking at it all. He's live in Farmington right now as folks work to clean up, Rod. Yeah, we're just north of downtown, Devin. This is the First Baptist Church. Take a look at the damage here. This tree split in thirds, and it poked a hole in the roof here at the church. And then as we come and take a look across the street here, you can see that the neighbors have been working all day to try and get the branches and limbs all packaged up and ready to get taken away. And this is really just the beginning, what you're seeing here. It's as if every electric repair truck in the metro is lined up here. Crews hard at work on hanging electric wires. Some of the transformers didn't fare particularly well either. Joe Myers took this video from his front porch. It was making this odd noise like a strumming a guitar almost. Across the street, DTE had tree trimming crews 100 feet in the air, cutting down the compromised limbs. One of the trees was laying on right on the power line and it began smoking. And so I was worried about that, that a you know, fire or something's gonna happen with that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was, no, I admit I was, I was worried. The time estimates on getting the power back vary. Paul Tomiko told us. Hopefully they're saying 11.30 tonight, so hopefully sooner, but you know, I can deal with that. No trees on my house, no, you know, I'm just grateful that I'm, I'm safe and no damage to my house, so. It's also as if they spooled out every inch of caution tape in the metro. Massive trees, roots unable to hold, fell down on homes. But Farmington wasn't the only place where they're cleaning up tonight. In Birmingham, this massive tree fell on a garage, engulfing an SUV belonging to Keith Bowman's daughter. Watch your step there. She's out of town, so dad's on wet mop-up duty. The garage is uh, off its foundation, and it's leaning over dramatically and uh, it's pushed into the neighbor's garage and the good neighbor's garage is kind of off center a little bit too. So their garage is affected by this as well. Now this is the scene throughout the metro area. You get the wires, the, the, uh, the tape, you, you have uh, trees on the side of the road. Uh, you see trees everywhere, huge trees lying on the ground. And of course the sidewalks lined with limbs that need to get removed. Uh, it's gonna be a while, probably a couple of days before we get back to something resembling normalcy. Back to you. Well, Rod, you've been uh, driving around in all this a lot today. What, are we, what should we be watching out for? Well, I think the one thing you need to do is to kind of slow down in that there is still a lot of power out and the traffic lights are out. And so yeah. you're finding various intersections where they're backed up and then there is no traffic direction and you're doing it on your own. And when it's raining out, uh, it's even more important to kind of 
back off, show a little patience. We'll get through this. Treat them as a four way stop. All right, Rod. Now from damage from one storm, we now turn to the massive floods. FEMA officials in town today to assess that damage. Right. It's all part of the push to get the White House to make a disaster declaration, which would bring funding here to Detroit to help with cleanup. Grant Herms joins us now with the timeline. Mayor Duggan saying today the president told him that help could be here within the next five weeks, but he said now is the time to make the case for Detroit. And even by then, it might be too late for those people who need help the most. FEMA out hitting the streets and knocking on doors in one of Detroit's neighborhoods hit hardest by the flooding. We were without water for about 10 days. I just replaced my hot water tank and have to, I haven't had to go to laundromat since I was a child, so wash and dryer out. So this week I'll be looking for a laundry mat. Teresa Bonham was one of those interviewed by FEMA. She's been in her home for 55 years, but doesn't know how much longer she can hold out for help. I think I, I'm okay so far. You know, I've been able to cover my basics, but um, like a wash and dryer, that wasn't an expense, or even the hot water tank was an expense that I had in the budget right now. Yeah, I was the only person who made it out. I woke a lot of my neighbors up. Oh, it's like the what, horn. two in the morning or something? Yeah, I'm blowing the horn. Mayor Mike Duggan meeting with residents and FEMA as well, saying he's been on the phone with the White House nearly every day. The president vowing to help when the two met last weekend up north. When I talked to the president on, on Saturday, I reminded him that in 2014, President Obama gave us the declaration five weeks after the storm. And the president said to me, if you get your paperwork up, I will uh, definitely beat that. Now, the governor is expected to sign that formal letter and send it off to D.C. within the next week. That means that help could be here in Detroit neighborhoods sometime early August. In Detroit's Jefferson Chalmers neighborhood, Grant Herms, Local 4. Okay, Grant, and also today, Mayor Duggan updated the progress on cleanup efforts across Detroit. Crews are removing about a thousand tons of damaged items per day from home. Still seems everywhere. Starting July 20th, the city will be giving a $250 a day fine to landlords who have not cleared debris and properly cleaned their properties. Deal with your properties right now. I'm working really hard to get the presidential declaration so you'll be reimbursed. I can't promise you that until we get it, but I'm trying to get you reimbursed. Whether you get reimbursed or not, you have a responsibility to keep your property uh, safe. Emergency cleaning and sanitizing is going to begin next week, starting with the city's most vulnerable households. A uh, local nonprofit is joining the effort to help some of those hardest hit neighborhoods in Dearborn access Dearborn, holding a drive through flood relief, uh, a, a drive through flood relief event. It's a drive through event, I should say, at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon at the clinic on Maple Street. Access will be distributing uh, critically needed fans, uh, cleaning supplies, and personal protective equipment, too, to the flood victims. This event open to all Dearborn residents. We are getting our first look at the man charged with gunning down a Detroit fire lieutenant during a road rage incident in Troy. Terrell Josie will stay behind bars after he was denied bond on a charge of open murder. And we've also learned Josie wasn't the driver in the incident either. Our Victor Williams is following today's arraignment and shows us why it didn't take long for the investigation and charges to come together. You know, all of this happened rather quickly. Lieutenant Dombrowski was shot and killed this past Monday, and shortly afterwards, his accused shooter turned himself in. Days later, he's now being arraigned. Take a listen. Calling people versus Josie, 211908. Terrell Josie facing a judge for the first time for his alleged role in the death of Fire Lieutenant Frank Dombrowski. The 27-year-old is being charged with open murder, felony firearm, and carrying a concealed weapon. Sir, your full name, please. Terrell Josie. Today he appeared in district court where he pled not guilty to all charges. Pre-trial services tried their best to reason with the judge on why he should be denied bond. Turns out he had multiple warrants for his arrest when the incident happened. Given there is no condition or combination of conditions that will assure the defendant's appearance in court or safety of the community, therefore in accordance with MCR 6.106, it is respectfully recommended that bond be denied in this matter. Josie's lawyer also tried his best to soften the blow in the matter of bond, but ultimately it did not work. Based on the charges in this matter and based on the fact that your client has five bench warrants, but very minor matters. 
Um, I am not inclined to release him on any bond at this time. And we did speak to the family of Lieutenant Dombrowski. They did not want to go on camera, but they did say that they are happy that Mr. Josie at least turned himself in. And Troy Victor Williams, Local 4. Okay, Victor, thank you. And the female passenger of the white Jeep Cherokee will not be charged. Josie is due back in court exactly one week from today. Trinity Health is the latest health system to require all of its staff to be vaccinated for COVID-19. That includes workers at five St. Joseph Mercy Health System hospitals and three Mercy Health hospitals here in Michigan. Officials say nearly 75% of Trinity Health employees have already received at least one dose of the vaccine, but the requirement is effective immediately. State of emergency issued in Tokyo. New tonight with just 14 days to go before the Olympics, how this decision could have a big impact on the games. Also tropical storm Elsa far from finished. Ahead here at five, a look at the damage the storm's causing as it marches up the East Coast. Nick. Two different shootings in just the span of a couple of hours, one targeting a semi, the other because of road rage. So what are the police finding in both investigations? And we are monitoring a severe thunderstorm warning on the far east side for a very small portion here of Wayne County only for the next five minutes as this moves out over the lake. Still looking for a lot of downpours and the possibility of damaging winds and small hail. We'll see what the rest of the night holds when Local 4 News at 5 continues.